next one is for the episode where Wilhelm von Austria fights against the white whale. I know there's more people than just Wilhelm, but look at him! Prime Wilhelm, he looks like, like a typical isekai MC. And this is what a hot isekai MC looks like, guys. I don't want to hear Natsuki Subaru being like a hot guy. That's why he gets away with things that Rudy doesn't. Don't fucking lie to me. Natsuki Subaru is not an ugly person, but he is not an Ikemen, right? This is an Ikemen, bro. Look at him. He looks like the fucking protagonist. And there's a lot of things that we see later on where Wilhelm really does remind me of Subaru himself. So this meeting happened first, right? They met first before Teresia saved him because I also uh, didn't have the presence of mind to remember this. He says, I haven't seen you before. Literally, I haven't seen you before to literally say, yes, this happened before, you know, the day that his village got under attack. And then he also says, why is the woman doing out here so early in the morning? A little bit of a misogynist, Ryan, uh, sorry, <laughs> Wilhelm. But, you know, she's basically the sword saint and she enjoys watching the flower. And I guess they had like this every day. I'm not sure how often, but like every day they would like have this meeting where he's out here training and she's like just looking at the flower bed. And it was just like a fateful encounter where this dude met the sword saint. And then he says, I hate flowers. Right? <laughs> Honestly, El Riz from Wilhelm back in the day, but it makes a lot of sense because he's an angsty teenager. Kind of just like Subaru. The shit that he says later on straight up reminds me of Subaru. And maybe that's why Wilhelm is also being a little bit nicer to Subaru. Because maybe he, he sees himself, his younger self in Subaru. The white whale subjugation starts with these two idiots running in. And it really calms the nerves of Krush. Because, because everyone was shocked, right? The whole ringtone was playing. We're waiting for the white whale to drop in. And it was so intimidating, but all that fear goes away thanks to these two idiots running in. And here we go. Totsugeki. I think there's a bit of an opening. No opening. This is called the Night Banisher. So like, they have a specific magical cannon thing where because it's nighttime right now, it literally, what? Puts a flare so that it becomes daytime? Right? How does that work? Because like, when it's daytime, you need sun. But not right now, the moon is still out. But I guess the amount of, like, solar magic they put up, it's acting, yeah, like an artificial sun, you know? Everything has been blacked out, so now we cleanse that. It's like daytime in just this area. Pretty cool. Now, I'm wondering, if you had the fucking Night Banisher, how do we not come prepared with the Fog Banisher? You know? Like, later on, we get fucked up by the fogs during Phase 2, and you would think that, like, the white whale's fog is a big characteristic of this monster. How the hell did we not have a fog, you know, a banisher ready, but it is what it is. Maybe for the sake of the story, it's a little bit too cheap for us to immediately get rid of the fog because the fog was necessary to create this dire situation where it seems like everything is impossible. We get a full overview of the white whale and these things, these little follicles, what they do is they spread and negate the mana. Meaning if you attack him, right, with magic, it does less damage because these are basically armor, right? It's it's uh, scattering the mana around and making them less effective. And I think that it's also acting as a physical armor too. I'm not really sure, but the durability of this whale is insane. And bro, Wilhelm, bro. I'm surprised they actually did an opening for this episode. I thought that um, because it's, it's an important, you know, fight against the white whale that they would show us it, but not show us it. But hey, here we go. This is one of the hype shit ever. Right over here. When Subaru is baiting, baiting, baiting. Sorry, the hype shit's not happening just yet. But Krush does has an amazing weapon. I don't know where she got this from. Maybe, and maybe, what, what is this? It's like a crown on a lion? Wolf? Some sort of beast, maybe to represent the Karsten family. Because that's where she's from. The Phantom Sword has no regard for reins. Now, does that mean she can literally hit the sun? Right? Because, like, think about it. You're saying it, it, it doesn't give a fuck about range, meaning it's all range. Okay. So if you shot this shit out to the moon, could you hit the moon? I'm not totally sure. I'd be, it'd be cool if there was cut content regarding, you know, this weapon specifically. Pretty OP shit. These are, like, light cannons, I guess. Just like how crystals are used to, you know, heat 
<laughs> you know, hot springs and shit here, right? Acting as like furnaces or stoves or some element of fire. These things are just, you know, the, um, I don't know, the light magic cannon shit. I'm not really sure exactly what these weapons are, but there's some sort of magical crystals in there. It's imbuing some sort of element and boom, just a barrage of attacks. The main goal right now in phase one was to make sure that the whale will be grounded. We're going all out. We send in all our strongest attacks to make sure that the whale can be grounded, but it actually doesn't even work out. This is the most hype shit of the battle, in my opinion. This shit, bro. The moment Krush says disperse, bro, this is like, I don't know if you ever played basketball, but like when you bring the ball up the court and then you say, nah, let me 1v1. You tell your boys to get the fuck out the way. Move aside. Let me 1v1. That's what's happening right now. Crucius disperse and who comes in? Fucking Wilhelm by himself and a lone dragon. Bro, it's so sick. This entire setup. Then he has his entire monologue about how 14 long years, all I've done is think about the revenge, right? For 14 years, he's wished to get the revenge. So I guess 14 years ago is when the previous Source Saint died. Without a fog hit, was simply eaten or a uh, different uh, attack. But 14 years ago is, I'm assuming, when Theresia died. And he's been waiting for a moment this entire time. And it's so hype. It's so fucking hype. This whole build up, bro. The backstory is a lot of death flags. And Wilhelm goes in there. Such a cool scene. And he runs along the white whale. I was thinking, how the fuck is a swordsman gonna fight against a flying whale? This is how he's gonna do it! He just fucking stabs the sword and runs along the whale. One... He's literally soloing it. It's so ridiculous! He's literally mowing the grass. It's so sick. Oh my fucking god. So hype. He lives up to the hype. I was wondering exactly how strong, you know, Von Austria is gonna be at this grandpa, you know, uh, retirement age. But even then, even if he's not Prime Wilhelm right now, so clutch. And every time, right, we do our attack, and we lose balance or we fall off, what happens? Our land dragon shows up and clutches. These land dragons, as well as the Rigers that the uh, Hoshin like, uh, private army is using, these mounts, without it, none of this could be possible. They are so fucking clutch. This is the Riger I'm talking about. Ricardo's riding a Riger, right? I think they talked about how, in terms of speed, the Rigers are superior to the land dragons, but the land dragons offer better strength, durability, I forget the exact pros and cons. You see, right? I think Ricardo hit it in the teeth right here. You see some blood, he basically flossed it. I think he, cut, yeah, he chunked the teeth out. He cut the teeth here. This is half of the molar of the whale, I think being cut. Mimi and the other armies go. I'm not exactly sure what their attacks are, right? There's a lot of like sword attacks. They have some sort of breath attack too. More of the phantom sword, pretty strong. Not sure exactly how much damage we're doing. I think this is Algoa. Still unsure if an Algoa is weaker or stronger than an Ulgoa. Some people are saying Algoa series is the Al, you know, the prefix Al is better than Ul. But for magic, it seems like Ul Huma was bigger ice than Al Huma when Rem used it. Boom. And it's looking good, right? Looks like that was pretty effective. Why the fuck are you tripping flags, right? We were trying to get this shit grounded, but it's still not losing altitude. So we just used all our attack, wasted our wad, and it's still standing up. And right over here, right? My magic was not as effective as it appeared either, thanks to these things. It's white hair scatters ma uh, mana and neutralizes force. So even physical attacks is... Uh, what's the word? It's good against magic and physical attacks as well. These hair, like, hair follicles. Pretty OP. And then what happens? More Ricardo going in. Felix can't do shit because he's just healing. Even though later on when everyone's debuffed, Felix doesn't do fucking anything. Wilhelm's still fucking mowing the whale. <laughs> it's just so bizarre. This old man is just skating on this ice. Just mowing on the lawn. It is such an insane fight. I just, again, never thought like, how is he going to fight? How the fuck is he going to fight against the whale? Yeah, he's just going to run across it. Takes the eye out. This is one of the really coolest shit too. Because like, Wilhelm loses his balance, obviously. Falls off. Ricardo hits him with the assist. Uses the side of the blade as a launching pad. Bro goes in like a fucking rocket. This is actually kind of comical, right? It's hype. But there's something funny about an old man just 
flying like torpedo missile like this at a fucking whale that's flying. Gets the eye out. Boom. It falls out. And it's looking pretty good, right? It's looking pretty good. Triumphant battle. Got the eye. Oh my god, we're fucking doing this. We're doing this. But it's like, oh shit. It's getting mad, right? The eye gets red. It's enraged. As like any boss raids goes, it's time for phase two. So I'm not exactly sure what these slits are, but this is where the white fog is released from, right? It is, right? Yeah, it comes directly out of it. The white whale has like um huge AoE voice screech attack, I guess, to kind of just like make people frantic. I I, I think this is just a just a normal screech. I don't think it's necessarily an attack. But later when the fog is consumed by everybody, there is some sort of madness that happens. I think that that's the actual screech part. More backstory. Just Wilhelm fumbling the bag with Teresia. And I guess this is the part where Wilhelm felt that he was being like sullied or being disrespected. Because later on when he meets the sword saint, he gets mad at her saying, were you laughing at me all this time? Because like here I am just training like this. But she's just here just chilling and acting like a normal girl. And it's like you were this powerful all this time and you and I, I didn't know. Therefore, that insecurity part was kind of projected, I guess. Phase two happens. Everyone, I think, uh, goes through. Oh, sorry. This fog attack. Boom. So this fog attack is what makes people forget you, right? If you get hit by a fog attack, you're literally forgotten. Not only forgotten. The world script, all the things that you've done will be erased and someone else have done it for you. It's, 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 it's crazy. It's not simply you just disappearing. Like everything that you've done just disappears and you're filled by something else. But if you obviously regress, it seems like that effect is gone. Everybody does remember Rem here. Otto, you know, talks about the forgotten shits. Yeah, in this run, Rem got hit by the fog. The other merchants got hit by the fog. But the sword saint, Teresia, was still remembered because she was not hit by the fog. He calls it a chuny name. It's called a fog of elimination. Before he would call, he would be a little bit awkward and self-aware of how like, you know, uh, a cringe it is because it sounds like he's just coming out of like a fucking manga or light novel, but he's too immersed in the story. He's not even cringing at himself anymore. He's not even calling the fucking flags. So this is the rest of the squad, but we don't even know or how to like protect the honor of the lost because we don't know who's lost, right? They're all dead, but they got hit by the fox, so we don't even know who's dead. More flashback, more flashback. And then what happens? This is the screech attack. So there's an actual intentional screech by the white whale, where if you hear it, you go mad. And obviously some people are not as affected by it as much. I think there's some sort of mental resistance that people have, whether it be through past experiences or the talent you have Rem is kind of affected by it. Krush is kind of affected by it. Felix is literally sitting here. I want you to realize how stupid this is. Felix literally said, Well, I can't do anything because I don't have any attacks. So I'll just wait until I'm supposed to heal. <laughs> and like, <laughs> Felix is standing. Sorry, just sitting, doing fucking nothing until Subaru literally says, Felix, fucking cleanse. What are you doing? And finally, Felix moves. Now, I have a headcanon that... Maybe, due to the witch's miasma, and because this is a witch fiend, this attack is not strong against us? Or, simply, it's because of the past regressions and how much hardships, how much tribulations he's overcome, and he's built up this mental resistance tolerance that he's able to overcome this white whale's attack? I want to side with the uh, miasma. I feel like... This is another byproduct of Satala making her miasma stronger with each regression. And even being able to see the unseen hand. If you really think about it again, if you take away the suffering component that's associated with the regression, Satala really does love Subaru. Like he is, she is giving him so much of these like witch powers that we're not even knowing how to utilize per uh, uh, what's the word? Properly just yet. So. We literally leak again, and this time, she shows up. This is the closest we've ever seen to Satala, I think. She has purple lipstick, and she whispers something in our ear, and she says, Rem sucks. Ram better. I love Amelia? No, you should have said, I love Satala. This time, she didn't just kill anybody because it was different, right? I think she understands the intent of what we're trying to do right now. Before... 
with Amelia. That was like... I think the theory that we're going with is... Satala is envious. Envious of what? Subaru's love for someone else, such as Amelia. And she wanted the secret to be held between us. Therefore, she made a point to kill Amelia there. Here... It's not really anything like that. We're just utilizing in a battle, so maybe she understands. So she's like, "Fine, let's just uh, increase the pitch of the uh, miasma. We'll get, uh, you'll get like uh, uh, the AOE taunts, but the lip reading, uh, lip reading. I'm not too sure. I'm sure we'll figure that out at like a different time. And then what are we doing? We're just running. We're just running, running. More whale attacks. This is the old Huma. This is old Huma here." The old I series is actually bigger than the Al I series, so maybe I'm onto something. I'm not really sure. Wilhelm is still fucking going. See, this is the breath attack I'm talking about. Mimi and Hetaro, not sure exactly what they're doing. It looks like Sonic Waves. It's just like breath attack. They're just yelling. Super sound Sonic Wave attack. I don't know. They're pretty strong though. Ricardo goes in, copies the Wilhelm strat, and just basically runs across the White Whale. And it's unfortunate because Ricardo fucking dies, I think. Right over here. More Ricardo and Wilhelm, Giga Chad. Giga Chad moments, takes off that fin. And then there's a moment where Subaru is like caught off guard. Wait, fog attack, we're running, running. And at this point, bro, this looks so bad, right? It's like you show us the fucking flower that Teresia was looking at. During a backstory, during a dire moment like this, when he when he's bleeding out, like this is classic death leg. This is like checkmate death leg. You know what I'm saying? Look at this shit. It's like, oh my god, we're fucking dead. Why is the flower here? It's like a bloody lily. When you see a bloody lily in 86, you know death is about to happen, right? And boom. Bro. And here's the flashback scene. More again. And I, I, I think I understood this part, but I'm not completely sure. So he was trying to become a knight to protect his village, right? But the village got under attack by these beast people. I'm not sure exactly where they're from. And then Teresia saves him. And this is the first time that he noticed, like he realized who Teresia actually is, right? She is the sword saint. And then he realizes how weak he is compared to her. And how embarrassed that he might have felt swinging his sword around in the beginning when Teresa was simply looking at flowers, not even disclosing how powerful she is. His insecurities, his lack of power, projected onto, you know, um, Teresa, just like how Subaru projects his insecurities. Again, a lot of similarities with Subaru right now. Were you laughing at me? No, she was never laughing at you, right? It's just his insecurity, his wrath, and bro, her sleight of hand, it was so quick, just disarming immediately. And she says, I won't be coming here again. So our fucking morning dates are over. Subaru, sorry, Wilhelm fumbles the bag. And it, this scene just looks like fucking Amelia leaving us at the capital, you know? <laughs> With a face like that, you shouldn't be holding a sword. I am the sword saint. I didn't understand the reason why, but I've been given that responsibility, right? The reason, you say. Taking up the sword to protect someone. That sounds nice to me too. Wait, Teresa. I will take your sword from you. I don't care about the role bestowed upon the sword saint. Don't you dare look down on taking up the sword or the beauty of a steel blade. So this part is very interesting. And I think my interpretation of this part is... Obviously, he has a lot of love and sweat and effort. He practices every day so hard, right? He's basically just... Maybe it's not the right example, but Wilhelm here is Betrugius and Teresia is Subaru. And the affinity for sword is the witch's scent. A guy that's given everything of his life towards its one cause has gotten power crept by someone who seemingly doesn't give a fuck. And that pisses him off. And it's like, again, projecting his insecurities, the lack of power coming out like this. But at the end of the day, we know that they got together. So this whole backstory of how it looks bad, of how much he seems angry. But later on, they do get together. I'd love to understand a story about that. I understand that there's like a separate light novel spin-off story. I think there may be some YouTube videos that we could farm, but we'll definitely keep in mind of that. And then this part, bro. This is not a confirmation to me. This is not a confirmation to me 
that Wilhelm is dead. It's looking like it is, but until there's direct confirmation from the anime narration or someone directly saying he's dead, I'm not going to believe it. I could totally see him literally swinging the fucking sword within the fucking white whale's gut and come out. For sure, that is such a cliche where you get swallowed by a big monster, then you fucking do your cut shit inside and you come out. I could totally see that happening, so I'm not gonna completely say Wilhelm is just dead yet. Now, Ricardo, though, I think Ricardo might be dead. Because look, Riger shows up because Subaru is distracted. White Whale's about to attack. Look at what happens. Blood? And I can't see Ricardo here. We see the Riger split in half. Ricardo is obfuscated. Maybe he got out. Maybe Ricardo escaped just in time, and therefore we're not seeing anything of him here. But it also looks like he could have just been obliterated down the middle, and he's covered by the blood. I want to believe that Ricardo jumped out and is safe, and it's only the Riger that's dead, but unfortunate. And then, this is how we live off. When Reinhardt said, he tripped the biggest flag, sorry, not Reinhardt, Wilhelm tripped the biggest flag of saying, hmm, this whale is actually not that strong. There's no way this is the being that, you know, defeated my wife. Yeah, because there's technically three fucking whales. So far, we've been dealing with only one whale. You're telling me there are three fucking separate whales. So this is phase three. Our entire forces are gone. Our main hitters, Ricardo and Wilhelm, seemingly are out of the battle. What the fuck are we going to do? against three goddamn whales when we're struggling with one right now <laughs> it's looking like a raid wipe to me i failed to see how the fuck we're gonna get out of this one but it is actually interesting it's actually very impressive that the first run we've done we've got this far first run as in the moment that we mobilized the army like if you've done any raids right it takes multiple practice sessions to learn the boss mechanics, to get the team synchronized. It takes multiple runs to actually, you know, do uh, a raid run successfully. There's a term in MMOs, raiding co community, if you know it. It's called progging. Right? It's, it's like a progging party. Progging is a short term for progressing, right? Your, your, your goal is not to clear the raid, but you're trying to fucking progress as much as possible, understanding different phases and mechanics, and, you know, you're practicing, essentially. It's rehearsals. Like, we're doing this shit raw, and we got this far. I'm genuinely impressed, but... Three fucking whales. Wilhelm, seemingly dead. I'm not gonna count him out yet. Ricardo, seemingly dead. I'm not gonna count him out yet. But, like, what do we do? If Reinhardt or Roswell doesn't show up... I genuinely have no fucking clue how we kill all three whales here. And that's it from me. We'll find out what to do next episode, but goddamn. Looking bad, and also... The episode title, Wilhelm van Austria. When, a t when an episode of an anime is reserved for a specific name, you know that's a fucking hyper serious episode. But hey, I'll see you next time.